Good morning, all you data nerds out there. Now, before you do anything, before you smash that like button or subscribe, please just give me the next few minutes to describe what I've seen the differences are between a junior engineer, a mid-level engineer, and a senior engineer. Now, these differences range from technical skills as well as soft skills, but many of them do tend to traverse many technical fields, whether it be data science, software engineering, network engineering, and so forth. Because really, as you become more experienced, regardless of the technical field, a lot of the things that differentiate or delineate a senior engineer and a junior engineer tend to fall more in big picture thinking or things that have to do more with soft skills and communication versus just only being really good at writing code or writing algorithms or doing some research. As you grow in your career, you'll realize in order to impact and have a larger influence uh, on people as well as in your company, which is kind of in tune or, or tied to the fact of you becoming more senior uh, in your role, you'll need to gain a lot of skills that have to do with more communication as well as like ownership in order to get those roles. Of course, there does tend to be some form of natural progression that you will go through regardless of how brilliant you are technically, just because you'll need to be put into the position where you're having to either manage large projects or, you know, communicate across lots of cross-functional teams in order for you to actually practice those skills that will help take you from being more junior and help you become more senior. So it's really hard to replicate just by coding in yourself in a dark room. It really requires you not just becoming a better programmer or a data scientist, but also becoming a better like leader, influencer, maybe project manager. There's a lot of different ways I think senior level uh, technical people manifest themselves. Again, like some people are better at project management from a high level. Some people are better at like leading a team. Some people are better at leading like design concepts and things like that. So there really are many different ways a senior engineer or data scientist can manifest itself. It's not like it is limited to someone who is super smart technically or someone who is super smart or, or very good at like organizing things. Um, but there are some core skills regardless if you tend to be more of the archetype that is again, focus on organizing things and ownership versus the person that's focused more on like high level design and trying to influence uh, what the next overall architecture of a system should be. So for the next few minutes, I'm going to kind of break down what I've seen are the differences between more junior, senior and mid-level engineers, just so you can kind of understand maybe places you can look to grow. Maybe you can challenge yourself in some of these areas if you feel like you're not doing them already, or maybe you can start a discussion on what you've seen senior engineers do below. So let's start with junior engineers. Now, junior engineers tend to be right someone right out of college, or maybe as the future kind of goes on, maybe it won't even be people out of college, just people with some level of coding experience, at least they can do like the basics. Um, you know, they understand basic coding concepts, whether that be design or uh, implementation, probably both. They will need some understanding of coding best practices, as well as uh, just actual implementation of programming. So, you know, basic things like loops and if else logic, objects, things like that, as well as how to actually like implement it and use it effectively and not just code everything into one giant function. So just a base level of experience. And these people tend to be more task focused. So oftentimes you will just be given stories or just small bits of pieces of work where you will finish it. You know, you're not gonna be trying to look for work to take on proactively, most likely. You're gonna be focusing more on learning best practices as well as just doing what tasks you're asked versus trying to, again, take on entire projects because you're still trying to learn the in and outs of programming and software engineering and design and spending tons of time trying to do that versus just trying to learn how to troubleshoot as well as trying to learn how to work with documentation and software maybe that you've never worked with. It's really hard to do all of those things at one time. So you're really gonna be benefiting from focusing more on task oriented work rather than trying to learn management as well as high level design as well as best practices all in one go. So you can focus on building a really firm foundation in again, things like troubleshooting, which I think is something that it's very difficult to learn on your own, but once you have to deal with uh, large systems where you're going to have to be dealing with systems that you may have never worked with or maybe have uh, poor logging or great logging. Again, it could range so much and just learning how to troubleshoot all of these various situations really teaches you a lot, both about what good documentation is and what bad documentation is, as well as what good code looks like versus bad code. And there's just so much to glean in those first two years that you'll probably not have a lot of time to focus more on trying to do things like project management or growing more into a mid-level engineer. Now, at about three years, you're gonna start realizing that you actually have some insight into uh, things like design. Perhaps you've got some ideas in, in terms of like project management, you're, you're wanting to take on more ownership. And this is where you start, I think, transitioning more into that mid-level engineer, where you start doing things more proactively because you know a little bit better what the right thing is to do at the right time. That's really hard to know right away if you, again, haven't spent a lot of time or don't have a lot of experience. But once you kind of hit that mid-level uh, mark, you've got enough experience to be able to start making good calls, whether that be more on the design side or the project management side, or you start understanding how to work more cross-functionally. Uh, you know, you start understanding how to work with 
team members from different departments where you have to, you know, work with, you know, maybe like a data scientist, or maybe you have to work with a project manager or some sort of program manager. And you start understanding how to deal with them as well as making sure that they understand everything that is going on in your world so that everyone is on the same page. Also, as a mid-level engineer, you're probably going to spend a little more of your time probably mentoring more of the junior engineers about things like best practices, as well as probably looking for projects that you can really take on and own for yourself. This is really where you start looking for things that maybe you like to do and you start being able to define things a little bit better as far as the projects you want to try to take on. And this does depend on the company because some companies, especially if it's small and you don't have a large technical team, as a mid-level engineer, you're probably just going to have to do whatever the company asks you to do. Whereas if you work for a larger company that has thousands of engineers, you'll probably be able to find some projects that actually you enjoy doing the work, um, but also allow you to have a major impact on the company. But you can start defining that a little more when you're a mid-level engineer and you kind of know what the concept of impact is. And the concept of impact is interesting because if you work at a non-tech company, generally you're probably playing more of a IT role maybe. So you're really more focused on just trying to keep things running. You're not necessarily trying to design entirely new software. Whereas if you work for a tech company, you're really focused on developing new things, developing uh, optimizations, optimizing different solutions so they can really improve the overall workflow or system flow, whatever it might be. And it's very, very different. So someone who works more in a big tech company versus maybe just a standard uh, company, even if it is larger, will have maybe different experiences as far as what a mid-level engineer is versus you know someone who works in a big tech company. Now for senior engineers, I'm not gonna give an exact timeline. You know, some people might say it's like five years of experience. Some people might say it's like 10 years of experience. It, it really ranges and even here it probably also depends on the caliber of the person and how much they want to become more of a senior engineer but i do have to say that i have seen certain traits that i think make someone a little more of a senior engineer versus some other traits for example i think one of the big things that i saw or i see a lot is the concept of ownership and i talked about this recently on another linkedin live but uh, ownership is this weird concept in terms of the fact that it's about owning either a process or a project and really being responsible for every aspect of it. And this is something I think I've learned through both doing it well and doing it poorly in the terms of, you know, I've been on projects where no one was taking ownership of the work. And so what happens is it kind of just stalls. Uh, no one really takes responsibility for decisions that are made. And it really leads to a lot of poor results because at the end of the day, no one cares if the project ends, no one's really owning the work, no one's really owning if there's a roadblock. And so this project might just get stuck for weeks or months and nothing really happens because no one cares. No one's driving it forward. And that's, again, focusing back on impact, if a project doesn't get done, regardless of how smart you are technically, it doesn't matter. And that's generally what I see more from senior engineers or senior data scientists, is they often care about the project that they're on and they really drive it forward. And part of that, another skill is learning to communicate across cross-functional teams and really drive their goals just as much as you're driving your own team's goals. And so you're really influencing, again, not just your team, but other teams. Your focus is not just on your team and their needs, but you're really also looking at other teams and figuring out how do you work best with, you know, one manager versus another? How do you make sure that everyone is on the same plane? You know, whether that be through diagrams or through meetings, there are various ways to communicate that information. And it's more about switching to having that big picture mentality. And you'll still have to spend some time, you know, doing detail work where you might be giving advice to junior and mid-level engineers as far as how code should look like and setting coding standards, but you're also trying to focus more on the big picture. Again, a little bit of maybe project management as well as a little bit of making those decisions as far as like high level design. What are the different components that are gonna come into play? You know, where, where are the places that you have risk as far as in this project of it breaking or failing in the next few months or years? And it's really more about thinking from that perspective and not just again, getting into the code and doing the nitty gritty. From my experience, as you go through, you know, again, the steps of junior, mid and senior engineer, you're really learning how to be more impactful with the resources that you have. Uh, when you're a junior, you're really learning about just doing tasks because that's the best you can do. You don't have, again, the wisdom to make the best decisions down the line. So you're doing the best that you can by just doing tasks. Uh, as you become more mid-level, you've got some idea of what right decisions are and best practices. So you can start doing a little more high-level decision-making as well as maybe managing a, a project on your own and not requiring uh, a senior engineer or a project manager as heavily to be involved in moving you along. And then as you go into senior, you're really more focused 
on being impactful by using all of your experience and your knowledge and one driving projects forward and owning them, but also passing on your knowledge and passing on your coding standards and good design decisions. And maybe even focusing more on almost leading a team and, and starting to follow more into that tech lead type role where you're doing much more than just coding, but you're really trying to drive decisions and it's being impactful in a much larger way. Again, you could just focus on coding the entire time. Maybe you're a coding beast. Maybe you really do put out tens of thousands of more lines of code than anyone else. And that's the best way you can be impactful. But for some people, that's not the best route for them. They can be impactful because they're great communicators. They're great at owning things. They're great at moving things forward and moving teams forward uh, in their work. And that can be super impactful for a company. Again, it does depend what companies you work at. What I've seen is that senior engineers really start taking on that leadership role where they impact the company, not just by their programming abilities, but also again, by owning things as well as just proactively taking on projects and proactively opting optimizing anything and everything that they can and finding what is the most impactful work to do first. You know, there is that concept of being able to prioritize and not just again, being purely focused on code. In fact, this weekend, as I was kind of looking through CSA career questions uh, on Reddit, I ended up noticing that someone literally posted something that covers some of these topics. And I'm gonna post or share it up here. You know, I'm gonna have my editor put it up. And you'll notice they also discussed the concept of like ownership as well as, you know, servant leadership. And these concepts that are a lot more soft skills focused. Again, there's plenty of technical things you can learn, but when you really wanna start impacting and influencing your company, it's also about learning these soft skills and not just focusing purely uh, on being the most technical and the smartest person that can program everything and anything. You know, it, it's about growing it and learning how to actually influence people, lead people uh, and own processes and projects because that's really what drives impact. It's not about how good you can code. It's about how well you can actually implement it into your company's infrastructure or uh, business strategy, right? Like regardless of how good you can program, if you can't implement things into your business strategy or implement it and influence and drive decisions, it doesn't matter that much. Now that's it for me, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I need to go file my taxes because I am way behind. Uh, but first, I think the tech lead just put out a new video, so I might just be distracted for the next 15 minutes.